it's Random Code here, and this is going to be the next part in a video series where I'll be showcasing how we can create a basic Fluffy Bird game in JavaFX. So last time I created basic movement of my bird or my rectangle, rectangular bird, and in this video I'm going to be creating these obstacles, which will then randomly spawn from on the right side of the screen, and then move them to the left side of the screen, and we will then check if there's any collision detection with our bird, and if there is, then we lose. If they're not, we we'll gain a point. And I will be doing it a bit different this time, where I will actually just showcase the process along the way, because I actually think the process is very interesting, just seeing how I create things one step at a time. So, I just created a simple method with obstacles, then now create a top rectangle and a bottom rectangle, and then have my bottom rectangle be created based on the top rectangle and the space between the rectangles. So, I have some variables. I then have my two rectangles, my rectangle top, just with an X position, where they add, Y position, it's going to be beginning from the top of the screen, so zero, the width, just a variable, and the height, which then defines how tall it is. And then when the height ends, we have a space, and we then have the bottom rectangle, built based on the top and the space, where we simply can have the same X position, we then have a Y position, that is moved down from the rectangle top height plus the space so that's the beginning of my button rectangle the width is the same and then the size of this rectangle button rectangle is then calculated by having the entire screen size minus top rectangle's height and the space and because we created in this specific way we will now be able to simply just have a randomized size for the top rectangle Maybe for the space as well, but definitely just for the top rectangle to be randomized size. And that looks like this. So now I implemented a random that goes between this area, which is the plane height, minus the space between, plus some extra space, and then plus 50. What this actually just ends up being is that we need a number between 50 and 400. And because we're doing a height of the top part between 15 and 400, so for example, in this case, we've got 343. It looks like this. We then just keep creating random areas. This, 141, 241, 74, 167, 380, and so on. So as you can see, we're now able to create these randomly sized gaps. The gaps are the same size, but we can move them up and down. And the next step is then that we should be able to, instead of having these obstacles be spawned at plane width minus 100, I would do plus 50, for example. Like that. So now they are spawned on the right of the screen. So right here, so now we can't see them. So now we'd actually just like to move them to the left. So I now added functionality that our obstacles will be moving. I created this move obstacles method, which does most of it. But let me actually just showcase because I think it looks quite good, actually. We now have these pillars moving from right to left. And as you can see, we for now just create one. And it then moves. There's no um, collision intersection, as you can see. But we're getting close, actually, to a working game. And it looks quite nice, actually. And just quickly how it works, we add now our rectangles to a list, a real list after they've been created. We then go through each element in this list and then move them one at a time. Then check if they are out of the screen. So if they moved more than the width of the screen minus the rectangle width. So if they moved out of screen, we then add them to this other list called out of screen. We then take our obstacles list, which is the list that contains all the elements and remove them from this list if they are out of screen and we also remove all from our plane which are out of screen and then doing this each frame we just simply just move them 0.75 pixels to the left so minus and we then check if they are out of screen remove them so relatively simple so we're now spawning an obstacle every time 100 frames passed so i think that's about every one and a half seconds because we should have 60 frames a second so this looks probably unplayable but at least it's kind of nice seeing all obstacles being spawned and you can see how they randomly spawned and sometimes it looks quite nice sometimes it looks 
horrible, but this might not be optimal. So let's actually quite quickly change this. So instead of being every 100 frames, let's do every 1000 frames, for example. That might be too slow. Let's do 500. And see how it looks. Yeah, now we're actually getting close. Something that actually looks like a Flappy Bird game. So the movement and a lot of stuff is probably very problematic still, but we're getting there. Let's actually do a bit of tweaking to actually make it look a bit more playable. So let's actually make the space a bit larger, like the 200, for example. Now it actually seems to be playable. Well, let's try adding some collision detection and actually see if I'm able to play this without completely losing. Yeah, this is actually quite fun. So, I just quickly added collision detection, which is actually quite easy to set up inside JavaFX because it's more or less built in. So, I just simply have another collision detection method where I just simply go through each rectangle on the screen and simply check if rectangle did get bounced in parent dot intersect with my bird, then we simply return true. And then I simply just use it inside my um, update area to check if at any frame we have a collision detection. Then I also call this method called reset game, which is also called if the player hits the button of the screen. So now I have this first prototype of a flappy bird or maybe like a flappy square game. As you can see, we have these spawning obstacles. And as you just saw, if I hit any of them, the game will reset. So let's see if I can actually play the game a bit here. So for now, there's no like points or no lives or counter or any fancy stuff. It's just some simple rectangles, which is actually how I like it. As you can see, if I hit the button of screen, the game resets and it starts again. So I hope you liked this video, which was definitely a bit different from what I normally do, where I would showcase like the process of how I create this game and each step, how we advance and where we go next. So for now, this is my Flappy Birds or Flappy Rectangle game. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And please let me know actually in the comments if you like this style, because it's a bit different from what I've not been doing. And otherwise, I just wish you all a wonderful day.